In this maintenance video, I am gonna to explain to you what parts of your bike you can actually take apart, clean and service, rather than go down the lines of just replacing with new, which is kind of how a lot of the bike industry is going, where you just chuck stuff away, which kind of sucks. This is GCN Tech, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do, because it really helps support what we do. If you have been a cyclist for a particularly long time and have aged beautifully like a fine wine, then chances are you will have had a number of bikes which had components on them originally which were designed with usability and serviceability in mind rather than just pure performance. Think along the lines of being able to take components apart, clean all the bearings, grease them, put them back together, and you could keep a bike going for a very long time. Whereas on modern bikes, is that always the case? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna go through now. We're gonna start the front of our bikes, work our way backwards, and talk through what you can do with each of the different components, whether you can service them, or it's just a case of replacing with new. Right, first thing I'm gonna discuss is your shifters. Now clearly, this bike has got electronic shifting and hydraulic hoses, which isn't exactly representative of the majority of bike tech, which is perhaps out there. So if you're someone which has rim brakes with cables and mechanical shifting, what can you actually do? Well, the mechanisms inside are all fairly sealed away. So if you're finding that the mechanism is becoming sticky and slow to respond, the best thing I would suggest doing is taking the shifter off of the bike, soaking it with some degreaser or isopropyl alcohol right into where that mechanism is, and then cleaning it out, and then you can put some fresh oil or grease and let that soak all the way into the unit, and that should free off any of those sticky components. With electronic shifters like these, I'm not aware of any manufacturer which sells any spare parts for them. So if you find that something's not working, chances are you're gonna end up having to chuck it away and buy new. Older mechanical shifters can be serviced. Campagnolo were famous for having all of the parts available and easiest to do this on, but it can be done on Shimano and SRAM and many other brands that are out there. If we move down to the front wheel, for example, components like spokes and rims, of course these can be replaced. You can't service anything like that. But when it comes to the hubs of our wheels, it's really gonna depend on the system that your wheel is using. So wheels like these Shimano's or Campagnolo wheels tend to still be using a cup and comb bearing. This is a system which enables you to take it apart, clean it, service it, replace the individual ball bearings if they need to be done, and that way you can keep the hubs going for much, much longer. That said, they do need to be serviced at the correct interval, which in some cases could be around a year. But I've found with these Shimano wheels, that tends to be a bit closer to the six month marker. Leave the hub bearings for too long before you service them, chances are you're gonna end up damaging not only the individual bearings, but the faces which the bearings run on, on the axle and the hub body. And if that happens, well, you're gonna to have to buy either a new hub or a new wheel. If your wheels feature a sealed cartridge bearing, like many do, if you find that they're particularly rough or not sounding smooth, that is a sign that you're gonna to need to replace them with a new item. If, however, you've got some fancy bearings installed into the hubs of your bike, then you do wanna service them. You need to do that before they're showing any signs of being worn because at that stage, it's too late to do the service because the damage has already been done. Now, sealed cartridge bearings can be cleaned and serviced. You just carefully pop the seal out using a pick, clean the grease out and refit some fresh grease. That way you can keep those bearings going for a particularly long time. Sealed cartridge bearings are used on a number of components of our bikes and that same principle applies. If you service it before it's worn and rough, you can keep it going for a long time. Leave it till it's got rough, then you're gonna to have to replace it with new. Sealed cartridge bearings tend to be used in the headset, our bottom brackets and on the rear wheel as well. Now, I've already spoken about the shifting on this bike, but if your bike is using a mechanical shifting, then the cables which run front to rear for the front derailleur or the rear derailleur can be lubricated to help them last a little bit longer. If your bike has externally rooted cables, this is super easy. A little spray of some maintenance spray or a little drop of oil into the outer housings where the cable inner goes is gonna help lubricate it and keep everything running smoothly. If, however, your bike has internally rooted cables, then I wouldn't go through the hassle of taking everything apart just to lubricate it. If you've got it apart, the best thing to do is replace it with new. 
Last final bit that I'm going to run through on the front of our bike is the caliper. This is a disc brake one, but the same principles will apply to a rim brake caliper because any of the pivot points can be lubricated with something like a chain lube dropped into the pivot point or just using your standard maintenance spray. If, however, we're talking about a disc brake caliper, I've done a number of videos before explaining how you can clean the pistons, but it's just a case of removing the brake pads out of the caliper, applying the brake one or two squeezes, pushing those pistons out slightly, cleaning them up with some isopropyl alcohol, and then putting one tiny little dab of oil on a cotton wool bud around the edge to help lubricate that seal. Then you can put everything back together and away you go. If your bike is using a threaded bottom bracket rather than a press fit one, it's pretty good practice to remove that from the bike, say once a year as part of your annual service, clean up the threads of the frame and the bottom bracket, put some fresh grease in and away you go. That means that when it comes to replacing it, you're not going to end up with that dreaded seized bottom bracket. Another area which I typically see people overlooking are the pedals of their bike. Now, it's going to vary wildly depending on what pedal system you're using as to whether it can be serviced. But as an example here, the pedals fitted to my bike, like some others on the market, are not designed to be user serviceable. So as much as it pains me to say this, when eventually that pedal system has worn bearings which are rough and no longer smooth and sound awful, well, as far as the manufacturer is concerned, it's time for that to go into the bin. However, if you have the skills, the patience, and the tools to do so, you can still take components apart, replace the bearings which are inside them with new ones, or try to clean them out and put fresh grease in there. And that is something that I've done with lots of different components on my bike. Now, if you have a pedal system which is designed to be user serviceable, firstly, happy days. Secondly, if you need to know how to do that, well, chances are when you were super excited to get your pedals installed onto your bike and you ripped the box open and chucked the user manual to the side, well, yeah, you need to find that user manual because that is going to explain exactly how to do it. Moving further back on the bike, we get to the drivetrain as a whole. We've got things like the front derailleur, the rear derailleur, and the chain, which are all moving parts which need to be considered in terms of maintaining them and trying to service them. Now, the front derailleur, and the rear derailleur, the internals and the real core of those are completely sealed and there's no way to open that up and get to them. And to be honest, at no point in my life have I ever felt that that was something which needed to be done. So generally, they are a component which, when you find they don't work, they are gonna to have to go in the bin. But the parts which you can do something about are the small pivot points on the front derailleur and the rear derailleur. And whilst I've never had to actively go about maintaining these or lubricating them. If this is something that you want to do to try and extend the longevity and the life of these components, you can just apply one little dot of oil to the areas where the pivot points are open to the elements. That should help keep them operating nice and smoothly. When it comes to the chains of our bikes, this is the component which I feel needs the most care and attention out of anything on our bikes. Not only is it gonna make the chain last longer, it's gonna make it more efficient, it's also gonna mean it's gonna reduce the wear on the cassette and the chain rings of your bike. Simple principle for the best servicing and maintenance of your chain, keep it as clean as possible and lubricate it correctly. That way, you can't go far wrong. Scrub a dub dub. When it comes to the rear derailleur of bikes, there are a few other components which are moving and can be serviced. You have the derailleur pulley arm and the cage, as well as the pulleys themselves. Pulleys are pretty simple to maintain. You can just remove them and clean the little bearing inside. The same principle as what I explained earlier with your sealed cartridge bearings. Now the derailleur cage, this has one main pivot point here and is actually pretty simple to take apart. I've made videos showing how to upgrade your bike to have oversized pulley wheels installed and the process of how to take this off is exactly the same. You have one small screw underneath, pop it off, clean it all up, install some fresh grease and away you go again. When it comes to the rear hubs of our bike, exactly the same principle as the front. It's going to depend what bearing system is installed inside as to how you would go about maintaining it. The crucial difference at the back of our bikes is that you have the free hub added into the mix. The free hub is what allows the wheel to keep rotating and allows you to stop pedaling. Now on most modern wheels, the free hubs are actually a component which are relatively simple to service. You take the rear wheel out, cassette off, and depending on what wheel set you've got, you can normally access and remove the free hub body 
with minimal effort. That way you can then clean it up using a degreaser or isopropyl alcohol, get all the old grease and grime out, install the correct grease or oil, depending on which wheels you're using, and then install it back together. And that is a component which is actually really good to be serviced on your bike and quite different to many of the other stuff, which is like fit a new one, chuck the old one in the bin. Quick general rule of thumb when it comes to servicing the free hub, or to be honest, any of the moving or components of the bike which have bearings in, is if you use a slightly thicker grease, it's going to increase the duration of the service interval before you have to go and service that component again, compared to if you were using a thinner oil, which is going to need to be serviced slightly more regularly. But you need to use the type of grease or lubricant which is intended to be used on that product. So that covers off all of the moving parts of your bike, which I think you could consider looking to try and service to improve the life of it. As always though, I think it's fair to say that a majority of modern components with their design and the fact that it's difficult to find individual components to replace certain parts of your bike means that generally the industry is leaning towards the way of replacing with new components rather than trying to service and keep going the stuff that you've already got, which kind of saddens me ever so slightly. But either way, if you do have the time and desire to do so, lots of parts of your bike can be serviced and kept going for a long time. And as always, if you look after your bike, generally it's going to look after you. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. And if you want an in-depth video covering lots of the parts I've spoken about briefly here, I feel pretty confident to say, search on GCN Tech for exactly what you're looking for, and I'm pretty sure we've got a video for it. And if we haven't got a video for it, let me know in the comments section down below. Well, I'll try and make one. Right, I'm out of here. See you later.